Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome to MOOC NPTEL course on Bioengineering, an interface with Biology and Medicine. In the last lecture, we started discussing some of the life properties and processes which govern life. Today, let us talk about the cell, which is an organism's basic structural, functional and biological unit. We will also discuss about how eukaryotic cells got evolved some of the brief evolutionary context to that and then finally, we will talk about the cell communication, why do cell need to communicate and how do they communicate. But before we talk about that, let me kind of uh, show you uh, the basic structural detail of uh, the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. So, in case of prokaryotic cell, it is like a balloon right, uh, in which we have these uh, uh, nucleoid or the uh, the chromosomal material of bacteria which is almost free floating now on other hand in the eukaryote the nuclear uh, material is within a defined nuclear membrane so that is something which you know uh, distinguishes the prokaryote with the eukaryote you know this uh, nuclear membrane uh, outside them there is you know surrounding endoplasmic reticulum and then we have the complex uh, network of Golgi body and the uh, you know various Golgi apparatus. Then we have this mitochondria which is uh, the powerhouse of the cell and we have uh, you know lysosomes and different other organelle which is all required for uh, a eukaryotic cell function. So, in the last lecture we had discussed uh, these prokaryotic cell and you know some of the uh, specific organelle and you had rightly guessed about the even animal cells, uh, especially the eukaryotic cell we have uh, looked into various organelle and the plant cell and its different organelle and what is the distinguishing feature of animal and the plant cell. Let us now discuss one by one uh, role of different uh, organelles in the eukaryotic cell. Let us first start with plasma membrane. And I will come to you now and ask you that uh, what is your understanding about this organelle and how do they function. All right, this provides a functional separation between the cell and the external environment and also provides you know way to transport the material uh, which cells perceive as a part of the signal and then cell could move the things around based on what signal it perceives. So, provides molecular transport and various type of signal which can be transduced from the cell. Now, let us talk about what is cytoplasm. So, cytoplasm is a region between the plasma membrane and nucleus and it refers to the cytosol which is an aqueous phase and the protein complexes are added to that such as ribosomes and cytoskeletal material and together they constitute the cytoplasm. Now, what is the role of cytoskeletal elements or cytoskeleton? It provides a structural framework of cell and their positioning uh, how the organelles are positioned in the cell that is governed with the cytoskeletal elements. So, in it provides both intracellular transport as well as also involved in the chromosome movement. Let us now move on to uh, next organelle which is nucleus. This is most prominent organelle in the eukaryotic cell. And you have rightly mentioned that it contains uh, the genetic information which is required for the cell and provides a site of the DNA replication and also the RNA synthesis which happens inside the nucleus. So, nucleus is one of the most prominent and important organelle which is uh, of course, governing many of the crucial activities uh, for the cell. Let us now talk about uh, another organelle which is endoplasmic reticulum. So, endoplasmic reticulum is involved in processing and transport of proteins and it is like you know the FedEx system the way our letters comes and you know a series of uh, different vans from the you know and the aeroplanes are involved in moving your parcels moving your letters. I think you know in similar way 
the body's uh, endoplasmic reticulum uh, is actually involved. So, can you now tell me the what is the role of endoplasmic reticulum? Yes, so there are two different types. One is rough endoplasmic reticulum, which contains a ribosome, and you have rightly mentioned it is the site for the protein synthesis. Now, what about a smooth endoplasmic reticulum? So, smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not contain ribosome, and it is involved uh, very intricately with uh, Golgi vessels uh, for uh, packaging proteins into vesicles uh, and transporting to the Golgi vesicles. Let us now talk about a uh, Golgi apparatus. So, again Golgi apparatus is one of the membranous flattened structures which helps for the protein transport and also it is helpful for exocytosis which is like you know the post office work it does and it is very much involved in how the proteins can be transported from the cell from one part to other part and it is you know very closely working with endoplasmic uh, reticulum especially smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Let us now talk about peroxisomes. Does anybody know what is the role of peroxisome? So, it contains oxidative enzymes for example, catalysis which could degrade hydrogen peroxide H2O2. It is also involved in a breakdown of the fatty acid molecules. It is single membrane structure and does not have uh, a genetic system. So, some of the organelles which we will be talking they are double membrane structure and they have their own uh, genetic setup whereas, uh, the peroxisome is single membrane and does not have the genetic system. Okay, well, let us talk about now the, the next major uh, organelle which is mitochondria. So, mitochondria is uh, of course, very important and can you tell me the role of this? Yes, it is uh, the power generation system, it is the ATP powerhouse. Uh, so, it is double membrane structure uh, which has its own circular DNA molecule. Uh, it is a site of oxidative metabolism and the inner membrane is where the ATP synthesis happens in mitochondria. So, mitochondria is uh, very unique in different ways and uh, the way it has its own genetic system and the double membrane structure provides some sort of peculiar clues that how uh, evolution would have happened. So, let us think about mitochondria in the evolutionary context. Uh, what are the progenitor cells for the evolution to happen? Uh, so, think about you know the uh, sea environment, the kind of extreme conditions we had and in which way the eukaryotic cell would have got originated. So, in this light let us say uh, you know in the uh, sea environment there was one cell let us say one of the uh, eukaryotic cell which has a defined nucleus. Now, within that eukaryotic cell uh, you know probably there was a free floating bacteria which just came you know close contact to this particular cell. And now with this uh, the membrane uh, it kind of you know got protruded inside the eukaryotic cell. So, this prokaryotic uh, bacteria is now engulfed inside the uh, eukaryote and this one has its own uh, you know the DNA the bacterial chromosome. So, inner membrane is now from the uh, bacteria and the outer membrane comes from the eukaryotes. So, now this became double membrane structure and probably this was you know one of the bacteria which was involved in the uh, uh, respiration process it has the machinery for doing the uh, phosphorylation uh, and ATP synthesis. So, probably uh, it eventually gave rise to mitochondria. All right, so, then that makes it really peculiar right. So, mitochondria the organelle is actually uh, probably the ancestor of uh, having the bacteria inside the cell and over the period it becomes a part of the eukaryotic cell. Let us now think about another situation where uh, you know another bacteria now which was uh, came in contact with another eukaryotic cell. Now, this new bacteria which was having capacity to do photosynthesis and now it got in co close contact to the eukaryotic cell and again it got engulfed inside the uh, eukaryotic cell. And now uh, like the previous context we have uh, the inner membrane coming from the prokaryote or the bacteria 
an outer membrane coming from the eukaryote and this bacteria has the machinery to do photosynthesis. So, now in this manner uh, you know we can see that how evolution would have happened. So, let us review this again now. So, who are the progenitors of ancestral eukaryotic cells and now if you uh, review this concept back again what we talked in the last lecture about looking at the prokaryote and eukaryotes. Uh, I think you know then you can probably uh, think about in which way eukaryotic cells got specialized uh, with you know uh, with some bacteria which became part of the eukaryotic cell and gave rise to mitochondria or the chloroplast. So, in which way the present day eukaryotic cells originate is still one of the you know uh, research areas for the evolutionary biologist, uh, but you know different scientists have tried to put forward some hypothesis and one of the hypothesis which is popular uh, that is endosymbiotic origin. The model for endosymbiotic origin is shown here that you know an ancestor of eukaryotic cell or the host cell uh, to start with has engulfed some of the uh, non photosynthetic prokaryotes uh, which you know after many generations uh, became like a mitochondria. And then uh, you know probably another uh, photosynthetic prokaryote got engulfed and then that became the photosynthetic eukaryote. So, this uh, uh, theory is very popular because uh, you know how mitochondria and chloroplast uh, have been evolved from the free living bacteria that form the symbiotic relationship uh, with primordial eukaryotic cells. Uh, and probably that could be the reason why mitochondria and chloroplast they possess their own genetic material and have the protein synthetic machinery. So, scientist uh, Lynn Margulis uh, gets credit for uh, proposing this particular theory. Uh, and you know she proposed that probably over the evolutionary time period most of these bacterial genes uh, were lost from the uh, organelles DNA and therefore, only the you know useful properties are retained. So, this this is place you can see the model for endosymbiotic origin the way we discussed in which way from the ancestral cell the specialized plant and animal cell could have originated and the mitochondria and chloroplast why they are double membranous organelle. Now, we have some better understanding of it that outer membrane comes from the eukaryotic plasma membrane and the inner membrane comes from the bacterial plasma membrane and uh, it probably you know that is why it has its own genome, it has its own uh, genetic components uh, and kind of you know it works very uniquely inside the cell and has you know certain superior uh, role because it has its own DNA contents and it can perform many specialized functions. So, let us look at broadly the cells, the two major classifications of cell uh, the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Uh, in prokaryotic category we can keep all the bacteria and unicellular uh, organisms including cyanobacteria. Eukaryotes are essentially all the plants and the animal kingdoms. Uh, we have various fungi, uh, yeast, different protozoans these are part of the eukaryotes. Uh, the cell diameter is usually around 1 to 10 microns in prokaryote and in eukaryote it is 10 to 100 microns. Uh, prokaryotes they are primitive nucleus they lack the nuclear membrane. Uh, the eukaryotes are having the defined nuclear membrane. Uh, the internal organization wise the prokaryotes actually lack lot of membrane bound organelles uh, and things are actually pretty much free floating in the cytoplasm. Uh, whereas, eukaryotes have very defined organelles which are having distinct uh, membranes either a single membrane or double membranes. Cytoskeletal elements and various cytoplasmic organelles are absent in prokaryotes which is present in the eukaryotes. Uh, thinking about the genetic components of it, uh, the chromosomes are single circular DNA molecule in prokaryote, whereas it is multiple linear DNA molecules in eukaryotes. The DNA contents uh, can uh, uh, range from 1 uh, to the power 10 to the power 6 to 5 into 10 to the power 6 base pairs uh, in case of you know the prokaryotes, where it is much larger uh, to the tune of 10 to the power 7 or 10 to the power 9 in eukaryotes. Uh, in prokaryote the transcription is much more uh, straightforward much simpler and both transcription and translation are actually coupled processes whereas, in case of eukaryote uh, the translation and transcription process are separate and it is much more complex. Now, let us look at the uh, distinguishing feature of plant and animal cells which we discussed in when we were uh, discussing about uh, the you know various cell organelle. So, in the plant cells we have a, a defined cell wall which is present which is absent in the animal cells. Uh, we have vacuole which is very large entity uh, which is very small in the animal cell. Then we have the plastids and glyoxysomes which are uh, unique organelles 
found in the plant cells which is absent in the animals and lysosomes and centrosomes are absent in the plant which is present in the animal cells. So, these are some of the you know uh, distinguishing uh, characteristics and different organelles which are uh, present or absent in plant or animal cells. So, so far we have covered about you know just refreshing you about the basic role of different organelle and at some sort of you know the broader context of evolution how the eukaryotic cell would have got evolved and originated and different specialized uh, organelle like mitochondria and chloroplast had some sort of evolutionary uh, you know uh, uh, context to that and then we have tried to understand one of the popular theory in that line. Let me explain you this in more detail in the uh, following animation. Prokaryotes are simple unicellular organisms that lack a well defined nucleus for carrying their genetic material. They are usually a few microns in size and are one of the most ancient life forms known from which eukaryotes are believed to have evolved. Click on each component to know more about them. Bacteria can be divided into two major groups based on the structure of the cell wall and thereby their response to gram staining. The cell wall of gram positive bacteria is composed of mainly polysaccharides and glycosylated molecules. It is made up of a single 20 to 80 nanometer thick homogeneous layer of peptidoglycan. In addition, cell wall usually contains tachoic acid, which is covalently connected to either peptidoglycans itself or to plasma membrane lipids. Plasma membrane is composed of a bilayer sheet of phospholipid molecules with their polar heads on the surface and their fatty acyl chains forming the interior. Gram-negative bacteria have a more complex cell wall. They have a relatively thin peptidoglycan layer around 2 to 7 nanometer covered by a 7 to 8 nanometer thick outer membrane made up of lipopolysaccharides. Porin proteins are present in the outer membrane which allows passage of small molecules across the membrane. Nuclear material in the bacteria cell is not separated from the cytosol by a distinct nuclear membrane. However, it is usually concentrated in a specific clear region of the cytoplasm called the nucleoid. The genetic material usually contains a single circular DNA molecule. Ribosomes are composed of proteins and ribosomal RNA. The prokaryotic 70S ribosome is made up of a 50S large subunit and a 30S small subunit where S refers to the Svedberg coefficient which provides an indication about rate of sedimentation of the particle. A motile bacterium propels itself from one place to another within the medium by rotating its flagella. A bacterial flagellum is made up of the protein flagellin. It has a helical structure with a sharp bend called the hook just outside the membrane and a basal body containing the motor just below the membrane. To swim forward, the flagella rotate in counterclockwise direction. However, when flagella rotation abruptly changes to clockwise direction, the bacterium tumbles in its place and seems incapable of moving. It then begins swimming again in another new random direction. Typical animal cell 
lacks a cell wall and contains several membrane bound organelles such as nucleus, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, ER, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, and peroxisomes. Click on each component to know more about them. An electron micrograph image of a plasma cell is shown here, clearly depicting the nucleus, Golgi material, lysosome, and mitochondrion. Click on each component to know more about them. Plant cells have a rigid cell wall and membrane-bound organelles such as nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplast, endoplasmic reticulum, ER, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, vacuoles and peroxisomes. Click on each component to know more about them. Mitochondria, commonly referred to as powerhouse of the cell, are membrane-bound organelles found in eukaryotic cells. They are responsible for generation of ATP to satisfy the body's energy requirements and are also involved in other processes such as cell signaling, cell cycle control, and cell growth. The organelle is made up of several compartments that carry out specialized functions and also contains its own independent genome that codes for mitochondrial proteins. Ribosomes, which are composed of proteins, and ribonucleic acids, RNAs, play a central role in protein biosynthesis. They read the nucleic acid information from messenger RNA and convert this into the corresponding amino acid code of proteins. Eukaryotic ATS ribosomes are composed of a large 40S subunit which binds to tRNA and amino acids and a small 28S subunit which binds to mRNA during protein synthesis. The subunit structure of prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes differ from one another. The endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus are involved in synthesis, packaging and transport of various biomolecules. The ribosome-studded rough ER is a major site for protein synthesis while the smooth ER synthesizes lipids, steroids, metabolizes carbohydrates and steroids and regulates calcium concentration in muscles. The Golgi complex functions to process and package macromolecules such as proteins and lipids for their export to various other cellular organelles or outside the cell. The nucleus is a membrane-bound organelle found in eukaryotic cells that is often considered as a control center of the cell. It houses the genetic material of the cell in the form of chromosomes containing DNA molecules complexed with proteins known as histones. The nucleus is responsible for maintaining this genetic information by replication and for expression of genes performing various functions. The nucleolus is mainly involved in ribosome assembly, after which the ribosomes are exported to the cytoplasm for protein synthesis. 
Lysosomes are found exclusively in animal cells for degrading any intracellular debris. They contain hydrolytic enzymes within sacs which can digest and degrade any unwanted material when released. Peroxisome is an organelle containing enzyme like catalase that are responsible for protecting the cell against free radicals and peroxides. They also play a role in metabolism of very long chain fatty acids. They have a single membrane and no independent genetic system. So now let's think about another topic which is cell communications. How cells communicate to each other and you know why actually cells they, they do need to communicate to each other is very important to know. So let's think about you know uh, the cell communication why it is crucial. So uh, for very many uh, different processes to happen especially all the cellular processes like growth, cell division, differentiation, moment, metabolism, secretion, cell death. For many of these processes to happen, uh, the cells need to communicate. The communication or the signaling processes could be two types. It could be a short distance signaling uh, or it could be long distance signaling. Uh, so, let us first look at the short distance signaling which is uh, how the cells communicate by the direct contact and especially the local signaling uh, could be performed with the cell junctions. So, in the images shown here is for the animal cells we have gap junctions. In case of plant cells there are plasmodes meta. Uh, the animal and plant cells they possess uh, cell junctions for example, gap junctions or plasmodes meta uh, which directly connect the cytoplasms and cell junctions actually allow molecules to pass uh, readily between the adjacent cells. Now, let us uh, look into the uh, cell cell recognition. So, animal cells can communicate by the direct contact between the membrane bound cell surface molecules uh, and that is actually required for many important processes like if you think about embryonic development or immune response etcetera this becomes very crucial. Uh, Let us now think about uh, you know various messenger molecules which are secreted uh, which are uh, you know other cases of local signaling. Uh, so, cells use some of these chemical signals for communication and uh, those are you know very crucial for signal transduction pathways to happen uh, in which way a cell which is you know shown on the left side a talking cell uh, transmit this the chemical signals and then uh, uh, another cell which is the listening cell or the target cell perceives those uh, chemicals and that actually you know communicates uh, and create the signal transduction pathways. So, uh, there are different example of local signaling for example, paracrine signaling. Uh, where local regulators they influence cells uh, the nearby target cells by discharging the molecules for example, the, the growth factors uh, into extracellular fluids and these growth factors then stimulate the nearby target cells to grow and divide which is a part of the paracrine signaling shown here with the growth factors. Uh, then let us talk about the uh, synaptic signaling which is you know very uh, important for the neurotransmission uh, these are specialized local signaling which are found in the nervous system. So, the nerve cells they release as neurotransmitters uh, and those molecules uh, passes from the synapse and stimulate the target cells. So, that is you know another uh, way of uh, thinking about the local signaling how the synaptic signaling or the neurotransmitters play an important role over there. So, these are the part of the short signaling some of the examples we talked. Now, let us think about the long distance signaling. So, both animal and plant cells they use chemicals called hormones which facilitate the long distance signaling. So, I have shown you here endocrine or the hormonal signaling. These are the specialized endocrine cells which secrete hormones into the body fluid or the blood. These hormones then travel via the circulatory system to the other parts of the body and some of the examples of this includes uh, the insulin which regulates the sugar level in the blood. For the long distance signaling uh, then we have the plant growth regulators. These growth regulators they move through the cells by the process of diffusion and then you know there are many examples of uh, plant growth hormones like ethylene uh, which actually helps to promote the fruit ripening. Uh, so, if you pick you know uh, a green fruit and then now if you are uh, able you want to speed up the ripening of them you can actually uh, you know add ethylene uh, hormone that will stimulate uh, the, uh, the fruit ripening process. Uh, also think about you know why 
when you are having the apples, uh, when they are stored in the bins, they are actually flush with the carbon dioxide. So, think about the role of these hormones and how they govern the even the fruit ripening processes. Now, you know thinking about how to accelerate uh, these processes and how to control them, uh, scientists in the plant biotechnology and genetic engineering era, they are looking at the uh, ethylene signal transduction pathways. So, they are, they are thinking about how to use genetic engineering to block the transcription of a gene which could be required for the hormone ethylene synthesis. Uh, and therefore, if you want to have the you know tomato fruit ripening, it can be done on the demand because you know that when to accelerate that gene and when you can trigger the uh, ripening of the fruit. Uh, signal transduction is very important uh, which governs uh, you know many important cellular activities. Uh, so, let us think about what happens when a uh, signal reaches from uh, one cell to the other target cell uh, and the ability of the cell uh, to respond is determined by whether it has a specific receptor molecules that can bind to the signal molecules or it does not have a receptor molecules. So, let us look at the three major stages of cell signaling. First is the reception uh, where the signals are received by the target cell and then the signal has to transduce uh, within the cell it has to move from like a relay race when the molecules has to relay from one to other molecules and then a response has to be generated uh, by the cell which is activation of the cellular responses to happen. So, shown here is one of the complex signaling pathway of epidermal growth factor receptors or EGFR. It shows that you know how many molecules, how many uh, you know the connectors are involved to just regulate one particular uh, signaling pathway and you know any of these aberrations actually happening in the cell may result into you know various disorders and you know uh, EGFR pathway dysregulation have been found into many diseases especially in different type of cancer as well. All right. So, uh, now to just uh, summarize what we have discussed in today's lecture, uh, we started talking about a cell and its properties, you know it was very brief just to kind of remind you about the uh, cells property. We talked about in which way specialized organelles like mitochondria and uh, chloroplast would have got evolved, uh, some of the evolutionary context to that we discussed. Then we uh, you know uh, had a broad overview of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell, so as the plant and animal cells. And then we kind of moved on to think about the cell communications, how cells communicate and different type of signaling from the short signaling to the long signaling. Uh, and uh, this kind of you know gives you some sort of you know good start of understanding the life processes and the cell and different uh, you know cell organelles. We will continue our discussion about you know these important fundamental concepts in the next lectures. Thank you.